I think um, it's very interesting and quite historic at this ash to think back where were we a decade ago. A decade ago in 2004 we were on the brink of the discovery of the JAK2 V617F mutation. We were understanding a little bit about high risk ET and the relative benefits of two drugs presenting a UK study. And since that time, we really understand the genetic landscape, perhaps for 99% of PV patients. The JAK2 V617F mutation rapidly incorporated into diagnostic scores. Only last year, the calreticulin mutation being identified, already incorporated into diagnostics, but also into prognostics. And that's very much a theme of this year's ASH, four abstracts dealing with prognosis in myelofibrosis, incorporating the usual clinical data that we see, age, haemoglobin, etc., with molecular markers and also carrier type. I think also the other interesting thing is, focusing first on this issue of molecular biology, is we've also now got this definition of patients so-called triple negative patients who lack a molecular abnormality and our understanding of those patients in terms of the fact that they have a worse prognosis and worse uh, respon uh, responsiveness to therapy is clearly evolving. A, a lot more work to do there I think. I think uh, also thinking about in the, over the last decade also triggered by William Vainchenker's description of JAK2 V617F We've got approval of ruxolitinib for myelofibrosis. In this meeting, we see data with other JAK inhibitors, but also the focus has been quite significantly on combination therapy. So there are at least six different combination aspects discussed in this meeting. Most of them are preliminary results, but still it shows a huge interest in trying to improve either the patient's ability to have a good dose of ruxolitinib, so to abrogate anemia, for example, with lenalidomide or danazol, or to improve response with agents like uh, the pentraxin analogue, PRM151, but also all the other molecular partners like inhibiting PI3 kinase, inhibiting histone deacetylation. And the smoothened um, pathway also becoming interesting in this field, and we see a, a preliminary data with a study with the smoothened pathway inhibitor LDE-225 and ruxolitinib. So really exciting from that point of view. Also interesting and long-term data at this year's ASH, for example, the Excel study, very much a European study, long-term data, patients treated with ET, looking at the relative benefit of lots of common therapies, anagrolide principally being used for younger patients, but the data confirming that from the PT1 study showing a higher rate of myelofibrosis, but higher rates of leukemia and other cancers with other agents. So really interesting and you know, people have been working very hard for a long time on these studies and the data is now coming out, which is really interesting. Also increasingly we focus on other aspects of disease beyond molecular biology, novel therapies, relative benefits of older therapies. Also um, you can see at this ASH an exploration of some of the common facets that patients have. So the real issues that patients face like quality of life issues, fatigue is a common issue that we deal with in day-to-day -day practice with these patients. There's a very nice analysis uh, from colleagues at the Mayo Clinic ourselves in partnership with patient organisations looking at what are the factors that influence fatigue and identifying mood disorders in particular for these patients. So not providing us with an answer for therapeutics but with a really important clue I think.